Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. And you may be wondering, <clears throat> didn't you already upload a video like this? Exactly titled like this? And yes, yes I did. And there's several reasons as to why I uh, deleted that video or, you know, took it off the public view. And re decided to release another one. <clears throat> First of all, um, this one is going to have a little bit of updated information. So the the, the you know the forecast is relatively going to be the same. Just the final forecast is going to be a little bit different. The final snow forecast. So stay tuned for that. Decided to make an update on that, but also the video got demonetized for some reason. So I felt like that's not really fair, and not many people got to watch it because when it's demonetized, less people have access to it. And I just kind of felt cheated out, and uh, many people did as well. I decided to remove that video and decided to upload another one. If you know, if you don't really want to watch this over again, um, just skip to the end because the forecast is different. But let's get right into this. First of all, consider subscribing. We just hit 10,000 subscribers. I'm so happy, guys. Uh, it's truly a meaning, <laughs> truly something that I've been always wanting to achieve. And I haven't uh, been able to, obviously, up until yesterday. So thank you for that, and you know, consider subscribing. Right now, we'll be looking at our uh, the factors, the average for snowfall maps. So on average, when does it first occur? And then uh, Enzo outlook, Noah seasonal outlook, and my fall temperature outlook. And then I'll show you the final, you know, when to expect the first snowfall. So we're looking at the average first measurable snow. You can see we noticed that September not many that not many areas the uh, parts of the Montana uh, Mountains and Idaho and then off the Cascades in Washington um, And that's basically it. a little bit also in Colorado <laughs> But that always you know, not always occurs and then you can see a little bit possibly uh, I think that's New Hampshire or Vermont I always get those those are only two states. I don't know <laughs> They always get me messed up, but then you can see October is a <clears throat> a much more expansive area. You can see that uh, most of North Dakota, western parts of South Dakota, Nebraska, Northwest Kansas, much of Colorado or Northern Colorado, the whole state of Wyoming, whole state of Montana, and then Minnesota, and uh, uh, and the UP of Michigan and Northern Michigan, and we see also a couple of spotty areas across the Northeast. Notice also how <clears throat> we see. Uh, November, a good chunk of the country as well, d digging into the southern, the, almost the Ozarks, uh, central Missouri, <coughs> uh, most of Illinois into southern Illinois, <coughs> 90% of uh, Indiana, and uh, the whole state of I Ohio, and you can see basically for yourself. Also, January and February are marked by <coughs> no color because it could occur, but it doesn't always occur in those areas. So let's look at the sea surface temperature first. And you can see that this will play into the ENSO or the ENSO factor of uh, this video. So <clears throat> you can see that we see cooler t t waters off of the <laughs> South American coast. And that is indicative of a, <clears throat> a neutral pattern because it's not fully a La Nina. Even though it may look like a La Nina, where a La Nina is usually where it's zero, negative 0 0.5 or cooler, and a El Nino where it's ne uh, positive 0 0.5 or warmer, and anything in between is a neutral, and that's what we are in right now. Also, I want to pay attention to this warm water right here. Uh, there's a blocking high sitting basically right there, and that <clears throat> sends a jet stream way up here, I'm diving down, and we're already seeing some of this um, characteristic of this jet stream already occurring in the next couple of weeks, we could be looking at a uh, a couple of a uh, big uh, big systems, or sorry, big cool downs that could be affecting the eastern and midwestern part of the country, which uh, usually don't occur till later on, but they're occurring pretty quickly. So I want you, what I want you to take away from this is blocking high pressure warm waters along the Gulf Coast of <clears throat> of Alaska means that uh, more cold air is most likely to be able more likely to be able to come through. Also, the neutral pattern is taking hold in the Enzo region. So what does a neutral pattern mean? Well, <clears throat> first you can see I want to show you Enzo neutral is favored to emerge in the next season. And you can see uh, through this. Basically what we want to focus on is the early early winter, late fall time frame because that's when most people see <clears throat> their first snowfall. And this is a video about when to expect your first snowfall. And you can see August, September, October, September, October, November. <clears throat> and uh, it's a neutral pattern, almost, you know, you know def definite. And then further on in the winter, it gets a little bit more iffy. But again, we're focusing on this uh, late fall, maybe even mid to late fall to late winter or early winter. And uh, you can see that um, this is basically just showing you the <clears throat> probably. <clears throat> this is actually an old picture. 
Uh, the, the, the new probabilities are more, more even now. Uh, here you can see some of the models were showing in El Nino. Here's the El Nino official mark. Here's the La Nina mark. And you can see some of them were even showing a El Nino, but they're now, if you were to look at the updated one, there are more showing a La Nina, <laughs> but most are still uh, showing a neutral, and I think there's only one that's showing a possible El Nino. So El Nino seems very unlikely, uh, neutral or a La Nina, but at this time of the, uh, you know, at the time frame we're, we want, which is <clears throat> late fall, uh, early winter, then it's most likely to be a neutral. So what does that mean, finally? This is what I... <clears throat> uh, Enzo neutral winter pattern looks like typically, and this could also apply to November because usually when it uh, when they they just call winter very unspecifically, usually it's related to December, January, and February. But you can include November in here, and if it's a neutral pattern, it acts very similarly. The <clears throat> the cold air dives way into the eastern and midwestern part of the country, and also wet and warm conditions off here, so that would increase a lot of possibility of snow <clears throat> if there was a storm to form here and tap into the cold. Possibly Possibly nor'easter, so you know, possibly some early snowfall. <clears throat> and with this cold, we basically could see some, you know, rain turn over to snow with any sort of <clears throat> clipper, a, a short wave, some flurry, some snow showers. As long as I think it's above 0 0.1 inch, that counts as your first snowfall. So as long as it's measurable, uh, you know, that's <clears throat> that's all it takes. It doesn't have to be a giant snowstorm. And also notice how the northwest may get left out according to this <clears throat> by the polar jet stream. But if it's more of a La Nina, then the jet stream will be going something like this. So <clears throat> we could be, you know, possibly, you know, looking at a La Nina late winter, and that could get more snow into the northwest. But that doesn't really apply to this video because we're talking about, you know, the early part of winter. So I think the northwest may see, uh, it's, you know, snowfall rather on, uh, rather on time. It doesn't seem to be delayed. The only area I think will be delayed in terms of seeing the first snowfall is the southwest, really. So let's go on now. I want to show you. This is basically what I found interesting. <clears throat> uh, and this is basically uh, August and November of falls that were a neutral pattern. And this is basically just showing you that uh, even, you know, in the October time frame, a neutral pattern still you could see shows cold. And this is just month by month. No, I didn't show you month by month. But this is what a neutral pattern equivalents to in the fall. Very similar. <clears throat> you can see warmer in the west, especially the southwest. And um, cooler in the east, allowing for more possible snow more early on. So this is NOAA's seasonal outlook. I just included this this for basically no reason. I mean, I don't take this into account really at all because I've mentioned it so many times, NOAA does not really update their, <clears throat> their three-month outlook, temperature probability, or preset probability until it gets <clears throat> within a one-month lead. And right now you can see it's 1.5, so they haven't updated it. They just put random stuff on here. That's basically what they do. <clears throat> and though, though they don't want to admit to it, um, this is going to change for sure, and I mean, come on, in order for uh, the fall months, September, October, November, to be 100% above average, <clears throat> you can see it would be ridiculous. I mean, this doesn't really mean that it would be <clears throat> um, above average, but it's saying that the chances are higher for above average and below average, which I don't buy, but I just wanted to show you this for basically effect. Precip, I guess I could look at this more because <clears throat> they're not usually with a bias, but you know, possibly... <clears throat> Sorry about that. Possibly the plains and the southwest <clears throat> may be seeing a little bit more of the Four Corners area across Texas and possibly into the Ozarks as well. This is my fall temperature outlook, by the way. <clears throat> and this is just uh, kind of like the summary of what I was just showing you, what I think will fall look like. And you can see a below average for a good chunk of the country, slightly below average, <clears throat> um, or even just, you know, this should be well below average, below average. And this average may be a bit cooler. Um, you can see, especially in the northwest. I'm not too sure about that, but I definitely think that the purple and the blue um, are going to be below average <laughs> for this fall. And why does that matter? Well, because, you know, the snow, when it's cold, it's more productive. It snows more, obviously, and we're looking at the fall period, not the winter time. Because, again, most locations see their first snowfall in the fall, not the winter. Unless you live uh, fur further down south. <clears throat> I also excluded the northeast farm any color. I think they may be a bit cooler, but the coastal locations will struggle to, you know, see really cold temp. So that's why I have um, no color for the Northeast. And uh, again, now let's, I think, uh, yeah, okay, so this is my final, sorry about that, my final who, when will you to expect, when to expect the first snowfall. And um, hopefully you like this map. It's a little bit, uh, 
uh, different. This is what I was talking about. Uh, I updated some things, changed a few areas, and I didn't make make two major changes because I can't. I mean, I literally, you know, it would have to be like two days out in order to be major changes. Usually, a major change in the long range does not occur, even over an extended period of time. Um, you can see that in these dark purple, almost black areas, it's September, I think there could be, <clears throat> especially with the areas uh, of cold air coming down from Canada, I think some areas in September could definitely see <clears throat> their, their first snow. Um, some areas in Minnesota could see their first snow, I said some areas in September. Well, yeah, but some areas we could see uh, here from the Arrowhead of Minnesota, northern Minnesota, so basically International Falls, <clears throat> and maybe it's Duluth, possibly seeing the first snowfall in late September here but I definitely in October and you could say also included September for the these mountain ranges I don't think you know if they usually see snow they will see snow and also if I marked you on didn't mark you on this map this map is not a hundred percent you know <clears throat> you're showing every detail so like you know if you live <clears throat> if you know uh like for example here you see is Washington Seattle Washington according to this map <clears throat> would see snow in November or even October um, yeah, because I, you know, it was really hard to draw that fine detail because the mountains and watch and Seattle are are really drastic in elevation, but they're also really close together. So basically, I think Seattle will be December, and the mountains to the west, to the east of Seattle, will be uh, <clears throat> earlier on, obviously September and November. You can see October, a good chunk of the country as well. I think the Northeast will see some um, <clears throat> some early snowfall as well. Uh, in several pockets, especially the higher elevation ones. That is again due to the cold conditions <clears throat> being predominant and, um, you know, there for a good portion of the <clears throat> of the fall, which could allow for more snow production. And you can see I also lowered the <clears throat> the October um, snowfall almost into southern <clears throat> Minnesota, which usually it would be in northern Minnesota in October. I think this year uh, we could see in southern Minnesota. And let me tell you, <clears throat> last year we saw snow here in Chicago across. Uh, across around this area throughout right around here where we saw a uh, snow in October so you know it's hard to predict last year I didn't think it would be that early on but it did and this year I think it will be early on it may not but I think it will and you can see November is almost all the way down to the south also a little bit of, uh, ahead of schedule and in December and January I do think I actually kind of strongly believe that the parts of the south you know, that usually don't see snow or don't see a lot of snow you know like an inch could see several inches more than usual or just earlier on because it, the pattern is very conducive towards that so especially we get you know like a fall blast coming in or uh, sorry like cold bass in January with cold air and we see like warm conditions trying to push up here start seeing bands of snow forming across the south that's just really exciting and that could happen I think so uh, thank you guys so much for watching consider liking the video consider subscribing to the channel again this, this was this was a re-upload so Hope you enjoyed and see you guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.